Welcome to part 2 of lecture 15 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off with this question of why it is that altering, uh, turning the flow alters the velocity in stream tube area. And a, a picture is probably the easiest way to explain this. Um, basically mass conservation dictates that the stream tube size has to change. Right? And this is because there's still sort of a net flow in the axial direction. So if I take a flow, let's say that it is initially perfectly axial, and I use uh, some guide vanes to turn it, so that there's now a tangential component. The axial component can't really change, um, or at least not unless there's some you know change in the overall height of the channel, right? So so the stream tube sort of contracts because the magnitude of the velocity has gone up. Static pressure falls. Um, so if we wanted sorry if we wanted the axial velocity not to change, we would have to. Uh, contract the overall flow area available in the radial direction. Otherwise, the flow in the, ax the axial component would, would, would change. Actually. Okay, so let's get through some definitions, starting with compressor blades. So the uh, flow here is coming from top to bottom. Uh, beta are the blade metal angles. So beta 1 is the blade metal angle at the leading edge. Beta 2 is the blade metal angle at the trailing edge. Alpha is the flow angles. Um, al alpha one is the input flow angle uh, ahead of the blades, and alpha two is the exit flow angle downstream of the blades. Both of these are measured from the axial direction. So the turning of the flow is the difference in blade metal angles, alpha one minus alpha two. And the camber of the blade is the difference in blade metal angles, beta one minus beta two. We call I the incidence, alpha 1 minus beta 1, so the difference between flow and metal angles going into the blade row. And delta uh, is the deviation. This is the difference between uh, the, blade, the flow angle and the blade angle leaving the blade row. The distance between the blades is the pitch, and the chord is measured along the true chord of the airflow, not the axial chord. Now, that deviation quantity for compressor blades is highly sensitive to the incidence angle. Deviation is usually positive, um, and basically this means that the flow does not turn as much as the camber suggests that it would. This is due to a combination of uh, inviscid effects uh, due to the influence of adjacent blades and viscous effects because the thicker boundary layer on the suction side of the blade generally causes decambering, um, as you probably saw something about in... Uh, aerospace uh, um, aerodynamics and performance. The deviation is also a function of Mach number and geometry. So in this plot, we get an idea of what this looks like. Um, so the incidence is shown on the horizontal axis, um, and the flow out outlet angle is on is this curve here. Um, and what we can see. Uh, the blade angle, of course, at outlet doesn't change, and so the deviation is the difference between these two, and we can see that it's a strong function of incidence. Um, at negative incidence, uh, it, it doesn't change much, but at positive incidence, we start getting a uh, very large deviation. The loss in compressors uh, also varies strongly with incidence. Loss can vary easily by a factor of four over the operating range of compressor blades, um, and it's typically not symmetric about zero incidence. Um, so here we have a, a loss coefficient. This loss coefficient is the stagnation pressure drop normalized by the inlet dynamic pressure. And again, we see this plotted versus in incidence, and where it r the loss rises at positive incidence, this is due to boundary layer se separation on the suction side of the blades. And where it rises uh, at negative incidence is due to the boundary layer separating on the pressure side of the blades. As for turbine blades, these have lower deviation and low loss at negative uh, incidence. Um, we can see here that our uh, blade outlet angle and the gas outlet angle are within a couple of degrees of each other over a very wide incidence range. And the loss remains low um, until we get to very high positive incidence. And again, this is because of the overall favorable pressure gradient helping to prevent flow separation. So 
So I've alluded to this a little bit, but take a minute and think about if you can sort of answer in your own words, why is it that you think that turbine blades would have much smaller deviation, even at zero incidence, than compressor blades do? So try to come up with an answer before you move on to the next part of the video.